Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Star Wars figure unboxing and review video. Now following on from the previous video that just dropped being of course the Han Solo unboxing and review in his more casual outfit. This one right here is in my personal opinion the more exciting of the two. I did really like that version but this one right here I think is hopefully gonna take the cake. This one is of course the Mud Trooper variant. Now you're probably thinking to yourself Justin, why on earth do you need two versions of this Han Solo? He was already a very divisive call for the choice of actor and the portrayal of Han Solo. Well, keen-eyed viewer, I picked this up not for the Solo appearance, but for the Mud Trooper look. You can have this guy fully decked out in the Mud Trooper outfit, and of course, everyone needs more troopers, especially brand new designs like this one right here. So that's why I said I'm super excited to get this one out here. I cannot wait to see what he looks like alone alongside the rest of the troopers. Now I picked up mine from toyswonderland.com. They are in stock right now, ready to ship. The link for them is down in the description below. You can choose DHL or FedEx to get your collectibles to you even faster than you normally would, even with this pandemic currently going on. And while you're in the description, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new hot toys or indeed third party content goes live on the channel. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here we have the box art for, of course, the Mud Trooper version of Han Solo. Now, before we begin, I just want to make note of the fact that the image on the front of the box, just like the other figure, is for some reason very warm. They've turned the color sort of saturation and warmth all the way up, and I guess it kind of gives that old-timey sort of look to the image on the front of the box. But either way, I thought I'd get that out of the way first. I really do like the image of the figure on the front right there, and you can see another image of him without the helmet on down the bottom, and you do have a picture of the full Mud Trooper getup on the side there. Now on the back, of course, all of the traditional Hot Toys style info. Now luckily there aren't any sort of ugly garish stickers on the front of the box like we saw with the regular version of Solo. This for me is a much cleaner packaging. I really love that picture right here. I wouldn't be surprised if Alex Brooks, aka BG Toy Art, took this picture because it looks absolutely sensational. You can see some sort of war battle damage sort of look to the entire thing. You can see mud and dirt all over the figure. This picture is absolutely awesome. And if I could have a poster like this for my wall, I would absolutely go for it because this, in my opinion, is figure photography at its finest. Now, on the inside of the box here, of course, we do have Solo himself. Now, if you did see the previous Han Solo unboxing and review, I'm pretty sure this head sculpt is identical to the one we saw in that video. And it does appear that, again, they've taken out that sort of plastic brace piece on the inside of the box. So it just goes to show Hot Toys are continuously innovating, including with their actual package design as well. But let's get this figure out here because I have been super excited to get this guy ever since the pre-order announcement. First thing I have to say, is he has a weight to him. I don't know why he's a little bit heavier than the normal figure. Could be because of the density of the armor here. These are really thick, heavy-duty pieces. And let me just say, he is weathered up a treat. I love how dirty and grimy this guy is. I always love Star Wars figures and props because of how dirty they are. It looks like they've come from a lived-in, war-torn, battle-damaged world. And this is exactly what I see on this figure right here. It looks sensational. That head sculpt looks absolutely immaculate as well. But you and I both know that I'm going to be displaying him with the full helmet. So, of course, we'll be taking a look at that a little bit later in the video. Now, taking a look at the rest of the stuff he does come with, you can see all of his accessories to make up that helmeted look. He does have his E-10 blaster rifle and, of course, a couple of hands, including the display base as well. So what we're going to do now is get all of the accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with the Mud Trooper version of Han Solo. Now, as you can see, he's a lot lighter on accessories compared to the original sort of civilianized version of Han Solo, but I'm pretty sure this is more than you're gonna need for a Mud Trooper figure. Either way, let's take a look at the display base first. Now, as you can see, metal nameplate again, which is a huge tick. You can see it says Star Wars Han Solo, but for some reason, no Mud Trooper denotion. It doesn't say Mud Trooper Han Solo, Mud Trooper Solo, 
Control or anything like that. I don't know why they chose not to do that. I would have really liked that. And again, the original trilogy style Falcon, not the solo one with the escape pod piece on the front there. Not sure why they've done that. But either way, it is workable for this version. Now you can see that there is a mud style flooring over the top, which of course goes along with the theme of it being a mud trooper. So I do like at least that they got that detail quite nicely down pat. And it looks good as well. The texture is really high def and it does have a rough feeling to the top as well. So I really do appreciate that. Now let's talk about their helmet. You can see it comes in a bunch of pieces. I looked at the instructions. It's going to be a bit of a task to put this on there, but hopefully it will not be too difficult to get it into that final look because that's the look I want to use on display. Now I really do like the helmet here. It looks like what we saw in Hoth, or I should say on Hoth, with the generals that were wearing these style helmets. So you could definitely use this as a kit bash style piece. You can see there is a hair plate on the inside there that can be removed. There's a magnet, there's a hole there, and then a magnet on the inside. You just slot them all together. Now the way that you actually assemble this is quite funky. So the chin strap is separate. You take the hair off, you put the chin strap over the back of the hair, which is very, very weird, and then you assemble the rest of the pieces. So these are the goggles, of course, that go on the actual head sculpt itself. Really nice detail. It's nicely weathered. It's nicely painted. They aren't translucent, but that's totally fine for me. Now, this piece has me a bit worried. Yes, I bought this guy to display as a mud trooper, but look at the back of that. That is going to be pressed up with this elastic onto the back, or I should say, onto the actual front of the head sculpt itself. So I'm sure you're going to see dents and sort of paint wear on the actual sculpt itself from this piece pushing against it over a long period of time. So not sure why Hot Toys have gone that route. I would have preferred a blank sculpt to actually have this attached onto in addition to the solo head sculpt as well. In fact, that might be something that I have to do to save that solo head sculpt because it's not something that I want to destroy. Now you can see the paintwork is really nicely done. These hoses are meant to go around the back. They are sort of articulated. They do have wires on the inside, so you can definitely get the looks you want to, and they do go outwards as well. So I really do like the fact that they are wired. I honestly didn't even think that they were until just now. So I'm very impressed that they've actually gone ahead and done that. Something that I wouldn't have expected them to do, but a nice touch nonetheless. Now he does come with only one real weapon accessory. This here is his E10. I looked that up before the video. Hopefully that is correct. It does have a moving stock. You can see a little flashlight. And I do like the sort of World War I, World War II style sort of old timey look to it with these actual iron sights on the front there. Not often do you see that on Star Wars guns. Usually you have these little bits on the front there, but not actual real world looking iron sights. So I really do like the fact that Hot Toys have done that. And of course, the designers in the movie itself. You can see it's nicely weathered, nicely painted. It looks like a war-torn item. And he does, of course, have a strap on there as well. So you can sort of sling it over his shoulder. Now, he does come with only four hands in addition to the ones he has on the body. They're pretty basic, don't get me wrong, but they definitely do the job. Did this black painted leather hands with a fairly nice amount of sculpt work on there as well. Either way, what we're going to do now is get the figure himself out here and, of course, take a closer look. And here we have the Mud Trooper version of Han Solo up close and personal. And let me just say, if you don't like hearing me gush about figures, then skip over this segment because I have nothing but good things to say about this look for this character. It is so nicely done. There is weathering and detail pretty much everywhere, all over the armor, all over the outfit itself, even down to this sort of scratched off paint on the belt buckle. It looks amazing. It looks like a proper lifelike uniform that would have been used in battle by a mud trooper. I'm pretty sure they're also called swamp troopers, which is really interesting. Now, I do love that all of this textural detail is painted onto the outfit itself. I don't know how they get that look, but it looks like mud and I love it. Speaking of looking like mud, look at this cape on the back there. That is absolutely awesome. Even on the underside, that's something that they didn't have to do at all, but they went to that detail because that's what Hot Toys does. They blow us away with the details. Everywhere that you look, there is detail. There is weathering. It looks amazing. You can even see other different straps on the underside there. On the back of the armor, there's even weathering. I love that Hot Toys went to that attention to detail to get this piece just right. This thing looks absolutely awesome. Now, what we're going to do a little bit later in the video, I'm going to pop the helmet on and of course, we'll zoom in again, just like we're doing now and take a look at the figure 
Jaeger with the helmet on to see what it looks like on the body. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit on Mud Trooper Han Solo. Now I really, really do like the way they've done this outfit. I've already given my compliments to the armor on the upper torso, but when we get to the legs, I really like the attention to detail. Now let's start off by looking at the actual shin pads themselves. These are a very traditional Star Wars design. In fact, the Mandalorian did have a piece of armor very similar to this on his shin guard as well. But the cool thing is, on this side, it's broken off, so it looks like it's war-torn battle damage, and I know I harp on about this in my Star Wars reviews, but that's one of the things that I do love about Star Wars. It's not a fresh, clean universe. There are some pieces and bits and pieces and props and armors that are really damaged and war-torn, and this is a prime example of that. It looks really cool. These boots look also really, really badass. I love the straps. They're very, very heavy-duty, but that crack really does sell it for me. Now, as you can see, the boots are also really nicely weathered, but I do have the other version of Han Solo here, and I have to say, I think, almost, especially on the bottom, that this one right here is a little bit more weathered than this one. Yes, there's more mud over the top, but on the actual undersides, for some reason, they are a little bit more clean. Not sure why they've gone with that, but yes, they do appear to be pretty much the exact same boots. Now, you know you're probably screaming at your screen saying, Justin, what are you talking about? They're perfectly weathered. But yes, I would have liked just a little bit more, and maybe a little bit more on the shin guards as well. They are a little bit fresh, but other than that, I have no real other complaints. This guy looks absolutely fantastic. Maybe the backs of the boots a little bit more weathering, but as you can see, the rest of it looks really dirty and nasty and awesome, especially that cape. It is caked in mud, and I just love the way they've done that. Now, in order to transform your Mud Trooper Solo into, of course, the full Mud Trooper look, there are a couple of steps. First thing you want to do is remove the hair. Then you want to install the second hairpiece, which on its own looks very, very weird. And then using this channel on the head sculpt that you can see, you want to take the chin strap and attach it to the figure. With the chin strap installed, then you want to take the top of the helmet and simply slot it on there. Next, you want to take the goggles and slot them over the top. Now, it's up to you if you want to leave them up here and have this as the look, or of course, continue on further by moving the goggles down, taking the helmet back off, removing this hairpiece, including the chin strap, because it's not needed for the secondary look, reinstalling the hairpiece over the top, bringing in this mouth plate piece, and of course, attaching the elastic around the back of the head sculpt. Once you have the mouthpiece installed, and of course, the straps sort of plugged into the back there, which might I say, is very, very challenging to do, you again want to take the top of the helmet, slide it down over the front, get the goggles in place, and there you have the completed look. And as promised, here we have the look at the actual helmet on the body itself. Now there's something that looks a little bit off to me, and I don't know if it's my sort of posing on the body itself, or the fact that the body is extremely thin, because it is. Look how thin those arms are. It doesn't sort of feel wide enough for this size of helmet. Did it kind of look that way in the movie? Yes, and yes it did when Han Solo himself was wearing this outfit, but I kind of wanted it to look like a generic Mud Trooper, which I guess this still does work. You can't tell that that's solo under there, but as I said, the body looks a little bit thin. Can I get around it with some creative posing and him holding his blaster? Yes, absolutely. Does it still look really, really good? Yeah, absolutely it does. I love the way this looks, but for the body itself, I think it looks a little bit too thin. A body swap later down the line might be in order for this guy right here, and plus, if you use something like a Fison, you'd get even more posing, and you can do that because that neck sculpt is actually actually separate to the head itself, so you could definitely do that and switch it out, get even more range of motion, but for now, I still really do like the way this looks. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison to the regular version of Solo, and you probably already would have seen them standing together in the other review, but here they are, I like the fact that there is such a clear difference in the weathering on the Mud Trooper version versus the super clean, crisp look of Han Solo, and I know I was giving it a little bit of grief for being too clean, but now I kind of see why they've done it, to have that juxtaposition between the two. I love how different they really do look, but then again, the bodies are identical, the head sculpts are identical, they could have included a different expression, yes, on the Mud Trooper, maybe even at least the eyes off to one side, 
but for me this still works perfectly. Just going over articulation on the Mud Trooper version of Han Solo. Now I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my personal copy of this figure. When you get yours in hand I'm sure you can push the joints a little bit further than I'm willing to go. Either way let's start off with the head sculpt itself. Now they've done this a little bit different to what we saw with the other version of Solo. You'd think that it would be a fixed neck into the body but it actually isn't. The neck itself is removable. It is attached to the head at the exact same style joint that we saw with the previous figure but it is a separate piece so you do get a bunch of motion out of the sculpt itself where you'd otherwise expect there really not to be so you do have that full range of motion on both of those joints which is really really impressive and something that as I said I wasn't expecting. Now in terms of the arms themselves they go out to about there. This piece is on a velcro so you could technically move it up further and remove it if you didn't want it there at all. You can go forward pretty much unrestricted. You start to sort of pinch a little bit in the outfit when you go a little bit too far. You do of course have a really nice double bend at the elbow itself. Again, you can move these armor plates out of the way, just takes a little bit more futzing. Now let me just say that arm is really, really thin. Not sure why they've gone with such a thin body, but either way you do have a swivel at the bicep and of course traditional 1-6 scale joint at the wrist itself. Now in terms of the torso, you do have a fairly decent crunch. There is some padding in there, so you will see some restrictions, but you can definitely move it around, get it to pivot, and you do have, as I said, that crunch right in the middle there. Now in terms of the legs themselves, these are quite hindered. I'm not sure why there is so much padding in the legs themselves, but they go forward to about there. You can get them out to about there. That is one of the most restricted sort of outward joints on legs that I think I've ever seen. Again, not sure why there is so much padding in the legs. You do have a decent enough double bend at the knee, swivel at the upper thigh, and of course a traditional 1-6 scale style joint at the actual ankle itself. Just be careful when you're moving it, you can see that I'm stressing the leather just a little bit. So as I said, exercise a lot of caution, especially with that more sort of serrated piece on the actual front of the armor there. So just be careful when you're moving the ankle itself. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things about the Mud Trooper version of Solo. The first annoying thing has to be this piece right here. The way you have to attach it onto the front of the sculpt being hard plastic with no padding whatsoever, I'm sure over time is going to damage the head sculpt itself. The second annoying thing, and I know why they've done it, it's to fit all this armor and to be accurate to the actual look of Alden Ehrenreich in the movie, but it's the choice of body. It's way too narrow, in my opinion, at the actual shoulders themselves. When you have the big old bucket on the top there, something doesn't look quite right with the rest of the body. The third annoying thing, and I know it's a bit of a cop-out, but I was really struggling to find anything else I didn't like about this figure, it's the fact that there's the original trilogy Millennium Falcon on the front of the nameplate, rather than the one from Solo itself. The first cool thing about this Mud Trooper Solo is how dirty, battle damaged, weathered and detailed this thing is. Even underneath bits and pieces he's still all weathered and I think it looks absolutely awesome. The second cool thing has to be all of the different looks that you can pull off with this version of Solo. You can have the helmet here with the goggles up, you can apply this piece on which I know I gave a little bit of flack but when you have it on it looks really cool or you can of course use the hairpiece for the clean look. I really love all the different different looks that you can pull off with this figure, it definitely does make up for the lack of accessories. The third cool thing has to be his E-10 blaster. I don't know why, but I'm enamored by the design of this blaster. It looks so darn good, it's also painted and weathered really nicely. Something about this just speaks to me, and it's not often that we get entirely new blaster designs, but for this instance, I'm really glad that Hot Toys went all out and made this piece look as good as it does. Just wrapping up on the Mud Trooper version of Han Solo, I I am super impressed with this figure, I'm sure to nobody's surprise. In fact, you're probably rolling your eyes right about now, saying, of course, Justin, you're saying this figure is good just because it's new. Well, that's not the only reason why I really do like this figure. Yes, it's probably one of them, but the main reasons are as follows. Firstly, the head sculpt is sensational. It looks just like the actor, and I know it's a reuse from the other figure, but then again, they're coming out around the same time, so you can't really say they've gone into their back catalogue, picked out an old head sculpt, and used it here. This is still a new head sculpt for this figure. The armor looks absolutely amazing. It's sculpted nicely, it's painted nicely. The entire 
outfit is weathered all the way down to the cape, the actual fabric of the outfit itself, even the underside of the cape and the underside of the armor, all of it is weathered. It looks amazing. It's a nice uniform look and I love the work that Hot Toys have put in here. It looks at the surface just to be a repackaged sort of throw-in figure to the line with that head sculpt that they already had, but no, a lot of work and engineering has gone into this figure right here. Some might even say more than is warranted and I might actually agree with that, but I'm not complaining. I am so so very glad that we got another trooper to add to our ever-growing Empire collection and such a unique design at that. I am super impressed. Well worth picking up in my personal opinion. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. They are in stock right now and ready to ship with DHL, FedEx or otherwise you can definitely select your postage options at checkout as well as a payment plan. Link for that is in the description below. While you're down there why not check out the link to Six Scale Network the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.